It's uh, right at one o'clock. That's uh, was the goal to get started. Appreciate everybody staying to eat. All the good food we got to enjoy. Uh, it was fun to celebrate uh, Dennis and Evelyn's anniversary. I appreciate the vis our visitors for staying around. Appreciate enjoyed uh, having a meal with you guys. Um, I'm not going to repeat all the announcements. Uh, just the ones I, I think uh, probably should be repeated is uh, let's remember Tiffany Packer and Don Decker as they recover from surgeries this past week. Let's remember Faye as she has surgery on Tuesday. Uh, and let's pray for Marsha as she finds out on Wednesday, uh, hopefully finds out when her surgery will be and what, uh, how that procedure is going to work and pray for her that she, as she, that she feels okay as, as she goes into that. She's been struggling here the last few days. Uh, Dave is going to be uh, speaking for us this afternoon. Uh, if you weren't aware, Brian and Beth um, are going down to visit their daughter, and he's got a speaking thing in Alabama on Wednesday, so they left after uh, our morning worship. So let's pray for them as they travel. And uh, I think that's really all I need to say. Yes, Scott? Oh, well, you have the Carter girls, I think, and Lauren Lees went to camp down around at Mid-South down near Freed. Is that right? Let's pray for them that they have a good week. Is there anything else I should mention while we're uh, up here? I want to pray for Lena and her sister. I failed to mention that this morning. We're good to have Lena here today with us as well. All right, let's have a brief order of prayer, and then we'll get started. Almighty God, we are grateful for the time of fellowship we had to enjoy. Lord, we're grateful for our time in worship this morning, and we pray that it was pleasing to you. And we pray for our worship here this afternoon, Lord, that it would please you, uh, that all that we do here from, uh, from this congregation would bring honor and glory to you. Lord, we thank you for our members uh, and our visitors who are here this afternoon. Uh, Lord, please bless our visitors on their travels and, uh, and their time with us, Lord, and we pray uh, that you'd be with Dave as he does a lesson for us this afternoon. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, for those recovering from surgery and those who are going to be having surgery that we just mentioned, that you'd be with each of them. Uh, and uh, help them through this uh, process and healing. Pray for our kids at camp this week. Pray for Lena and her sister, the health problems that they've been having. Uh, Lord, we pray for our sister Judy and Frank uh, and their health, and pray that you'd be with them also. Uh, Lord, please bless us now as we begin our worship, uh, and may we glorify you. In Christ's name, amen. singing with Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of Our Fathers living still is my dove dungeon fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts be high with joy when e'er we hear that Oh, my life. 
this day and thank you for this time that we have to come together and worship you and learn more about your word. Lord, we're thankful for the time of worship that we had this morning, the time of fellowship that we had. And Lord, we thank you for all the hands that prepared the food that we had. And Lord, we just again thank you for the time that we get to spend together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, please be with all of those who are sick and ailing at this time. Lord, please be with all of those who are recovering from surgeries or have upcoming surgeries, Lord, just please continue to watch over them. Lord, please be with all of those who are traveling, especially over this holiday weekend. Help keep them safe and help them to come back here when they can. Lord, please be with all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones at this time. Lord, please help them, help them to continue to look to you for strength and guidance. Lord, just please continue to be with all of us, watch over us, and keep us in your care. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, before we are led in our, uh, our lesson, we're going to sing Heavenly Sunlight. And if you would, please stand with me as we sing this. Walking in sunlight all of my journey. 
over the mountain, through the deep veil. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Everybody's like, oh, I just had cake. All right, good afternoon. All right, somebody's out there. That's good. Um, the back screen isn't working. Now, if you know, if you remember anything about my preaching habits, I don't bring notes. I don't like, I don't, I, don't, I like to not use my notes. I like to, uh, I'll have my outline on the, on the screens, on the PowerPoints. So this will be interesting because I'll constantly be doing this every so often, but the bulb's out and that's not something we're going to do in an hour during lunch. So, uh, But we'll make do. Glad you're here. Glad our, some of our visitors stayed. We hope you have a good visit while you're in town this week. And, and uh, uh, we're grateful that everyone's here, Jason and Maria. We love you all so much and we're glad to see you guys so much. Um, you know, I wanted to take a moment... Uh, first of all, somebody needs to remember to tell Mikey that I, see, I was hoping she would have stayed, that I used Comic Sans in my font on one slide. Um, she'll appreciate that wholeheartedly. Anyway, okay. Um, one, we, we love the national parks. Wendy and I are, I try to get out to several every year. We, I, I think we're only going to do like a couple this year though, but last year we hit seven. And it was just really an enjoyable trip. One of those trips we made was out to Oregon and uh, Northern California. We went to Crater Lake. It's a beautiful place if you've, if you've never seen it. This island out here in the middle of the lake is called Wizard Island because it looks like a wizard's hat. And um, it's a beautiful place to visit and it's just uh, the scenery around there is gorgeous. If you, you can take this hike, it's about a mile down. Uh, and it's down. I mean, you're like going down the side of the crater. So you, this hike, and it's got all these switchbacks, and you go back and forth and back and forth. So it takes you, going down's not bad. You know, it's the coming back up that's really brutal. Um, we got down to the bottom, and, you know, I'm like, okay, this is really neat. This is really cool. And about one in every 15 or 20 people would jump in the water. And I'm like, I'm here. I got to do this, right? 
And, and so I, I jumped in. That's me. That's about the extent of it. You know, the water was so cold, and you could see 40 feet straight down into the water. I mean, I could see the bottom, and it was just, it was just beautiful. It was a really neat thing. But not everybody, not everybody decided to take that hike, and not everybody decided to go out there and get in the water. But, you know, the people that were there in the park, I'm sure, really enjoyed it. Use that analogy, if you will, a little bit. As we discuss Matthew chapter 14, and we talk about the people who were associated with the storm that was coming as the disciples were getting on the boat, with Jesus. Matthew chapter 14, we're going to read a few verses here. Let's read our context and then we will uh, make some points that we can um, that we can all get something from. Matthew chapter 14 beginning in verse 22. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the on the mountains by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves from the wind, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, when it went, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Now, now, if you will, for just a minute, Jesus is approaching. He's not in the boat yet, right? So there's this storm. The waves are whipping because they're obviously nervous. They're scared. They're, they're concerned. I, I don't picture Jesus saying this softly. I don't think he's yelling at them. But, you know, I picture him, you know, cupping his hands. Or I, You know, you just have to have that visual. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, because he's that far away and it's that raining and everything, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him And said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is one of those, it's just such a visual scene for me. But it's one that I don't want to make, I want to make sure we're not visualizing what the coloring page said from Sunday school, right? It's not... It's not that they're, they're sitting out on the boat and, and Jesus is like a couple feet away so they can hear him. And, and the, you know, I picture, uh, oh, well, let me go back. I, pi- I picture, not, maybe not this extreme, um, but think about those waves that they were dealing with. Think about how hard it would have been he- to hear Jesus. Thinking about what Peter was going to do by stepping out of that boat. He wasn't stepping out onto that, that glassy lake like I, I jumped into it in Crater Lake. Peter was stepping out of the boat into a stormy sea. So we, we have to visualize everything that's going on here in these few moments, understanding exactly what is happening around them as we hear these words spoken. So as we think about it, there's, there's three groups of people here, truly. Outside of Jesus, there are three groups of people here. There's First of all, there's the multitudes that are on the shore. I want to go back a couple verses in verse 19 and think about who these people are. Um, Up to verse 19 when it says, uh, this is the people he's feeding the 5,000. He says, Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish and looked up to heaven and he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments that remained, and now that they had eaten, those, now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And then we got into our scripture, which said, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. This is the same group of people who just got miraculously fed by seven small pieces of food. 
This is the same group that saw Jesus and wanted to gather around him out in the middle of nowhere and be fed by this man called Jesus. I think about the fact that they had seen the power of Jesus, that they, they had truly understood that, that there was something extraordinary about this man. And despite all of that, they went home instead of beg, begging for passage across the lake, instead of begging to, to be included in what was happening next, instead of saying, is there room on the boat? I want to go too. They sat back and stayed on the shore, or they went home. They went back to family. They went back to whatever they had. That's the first group of people in this, in this event that we're reading about here. The second one was those disciples who obeyed, and, and they crossed the water. They went through the water. Look with me in, in a couple verses, 22, 26, and 33. We're not taking them out of context here because we just read the whole thing. In verse 22, he said that Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. He made them. He urged them. He invited them strongly were some of the ways you could translate that word. Down in verse 26, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. And then down in verse 33, then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. These men were, were they, they got in here because Jesus told them, you need to come with me. And they followed him. They got in the boat. They were crossing through the water, and they were terrified. They were so afraid um, as they were going through that water, they were, they were struggling with the fact that they felt like they were completely out of control. That's important for us to understand that because of those circumstances. And they were in shock and in awe when he calmed the storm. They were, they were gather, gathering at his feet. They were worshiping him. They were, they were giving him their time. and their, their, They were like, oh my goodness, this is, you truly are the Son of God. They just watched him turn seven pieces of food into enough to feed 10,000 people. We don't know how many. 5,000 men and then the women and children alongside. Here's our second group of people. Those, those disciples who were in the boat, they went because Jesus called them, but they still struggled with the circumstances they were in. They still didn't trust. They didn't truly understand how much God was doing for them. And the third is Peter. I love that visual. It's kind of blurry. So it, you can either put on your glasses or take off your glasses. Maybe it'll look better. Um, but I, I, th I think about Peter. We give Peter a lot of grief sometimes. Peter, Peter kind of stumbled over himself a lot in the Scriptures. But Peter was the one who stepped out of the boat. He cried out to the Lord. He says, if it's you, I can't tell. But if that's you, Lord, just call me. I'll come to you. And Jesus says, come. And I think there's some things we have to see in, in verses 28 through 31. Some things that are important in my mind, in my heart, as I studied it. And Peter answered him saying, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And the, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And he began to sink. He cried out and sang, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, a couple things I noticed here. A couple things I don't remember what I... Let's see. All right. Peter wanted to be with him. His faith was strong. Peter walked on the water. Let's be clear. It said that he took several... He walked. I don't know how far he walked. He walked on the water is what the Scriptures tell us. The second thing was that it, he, you know, he wanted to be with him. He wanted to go to Jesus he wasn't sitting back and waiting for that moment, waiting for something to happen. But he got distracted, forgetting who was truly in control. And I, and I see this next verse. I don't know if anybody saw my post on Facebook. I, I tagged several of my preacher friends and asked them, how do you feel about who Jesus is talking to and, and what he's saying? One of the things we, we came to, the conclusions we came to, was that Jesus is having a special moment here. This is not Jesus when he sits back and goes, 
you know, he's telling the Pharisees, oh, you of little faith. I, I, this is one of those special moments where he's, Peter has, has leapt out of the boat and come toward him, and Jesus is picking him up and saying, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt that I wouldn't, that you, that you couldn't walk on the water anymore just because the wind was blowing? It puts a different perspective on it for a minute there. It helps us think about the fact that, that Jesus was, he was just wishing that Peter would have just held out a little bit longer, would have ignored the wind, could have suppressed his fear in that moment. When I think about these, these people in this, in this event that we're, that we're reading about, I, I think about where am I in this story? I hope we can always put ourselves in other people's shoes, especially in the Bible. Where do I put myself in this, in this event? Because there's, there's, first of all, there's those people that are on the beach, right? Those people that are on the shore that didn't get into the boat. They weren't there at the time. You know, John chapter 12, let's read a few verses together not, and, and kind of take some other scriptures into um, what we're thinking about. John chapter 12, verses 42 through 50. Um, Jesus is speaking here and he says, Nevertheless, oh, sorry, he will in just a minute. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in that last day. And he goes on. But those people on the beach are the ones who aren't, you know, they're, they're, they're afraid of getting in the boat. There are people who are afraid of committing to church, committing to a life of Christianity. Oh, that means I have to walk away from X, Y, or Z, some of the stuff that Brian talked about this morning. You know, that life that we have to walk away from in order to be, be a Christian, in order to have that kind of lifestyle, that means we can't be afraid to get in the boat. The second thing I wanted us to read was in Acts 13. Acts chapter 13, and verses 45 through 47. Paul here, is, is, as he's addressing them, says, um, he says, But when the Jews saw the multitudes, and they were filled with envy, and contradicting, and blaspheming, and op they opposed the things spoken by Paul. And then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, but since you reject it, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. You see there, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't like what they heard. They didn't like what, what they were saying, the, the word of God. They didn't like what, what was expected of them. And lastly, there in Acts 20, 26, 27 through 29, it's that, it's Felix. It's that moment that Paul has with Felix when, when Paul has been teaching him and preaching to him and Felix says, Paul, you've almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Sometimes things get in the way. Our minds get in the way of our hearts. And sometimes we just sit back and wait. Wait for a different moment. Wait for something special to happen in our lives. I think about those people on the beach that didn't beg to get on the boat. There are people in our lives that we know that are not in the boat with us. They are not in the kingdom. They are not in the church. And for one reason or another, they are choosing not to obey, are choosing not to come along and cross through. And those are the people we have to reach out to and help to get over these hurdles, to help them get through the struggles that they have. The second people are the people who are in the boat Right? The people who, who, who are doing what they, they should be doing, they're following Jesus. Philippians chapter 1, verses 12. Oh. Verses, 
Philippians 1, I didn't put my bookmark in the right spot. Verses 12 through 14, it says, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it became evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest, and my chains are in Christ, that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the words without fear. They were willing to get in the boat. They were willing to do what needed to be done to to be included in God's kingdom, to be included in God's church. I I think about 1 Thessalonians 4, 1, that that when we're in that storm, because this life really is, it can be really stormy sometimes. You you sang heavenly sunlight, and that was going through my mind. Heavenly sunlight, and then we're going, anyway. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1, he says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and please God. He's saying here, you know, you're doing, you're doing great. Stay with what you're doing. You're in the boat. Don't let go of your faith. And then he says down further in verses 9 through 12, he says, but concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed you do. You do so toward... You do so... Uh, toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia, but we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your business, to, to work with your own hands as we commanded, that you walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. He, see, he says, you've, you've got you've to do more. You've gotta, and this is the part, I, and I, I twisted my notes up here. This is, what I, this, is, this is what I get. So, there's in the boat. They're stepping out. Should have been twisted around. When we're already in the boat, if we, need, we need to be doing more. We need, to be, and we need to be encouraging more. Think about what those verses just said that we read. That's why I was a little, that's why I, I stuttered for a second there. He says that when you love one another, that you need to do so even more. We can't be, we can't be content with our Christianity, I think, is what Paul said here. In several instances, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 12. We can't be content with, with oh, I'm going to church three times a week. I'm, that's good enough. I've met my requirements. I've checked the box. I've done everything that God asked me to do. We have to be, have to be growing. Brian mentioned this again this morning, too. It was kind of interesting. We touched on the same points. But we have to be trying to do more, trying, trying to grow if you look at yourself and your spirituality and it's the same as you were five years ago, or if you look at your spirituality and you think, is anyone looking up to me right now spiritually? That's a moment in your life when you reflect on something. Does anybody look up to me spiritually? Is anybody asking me to pray for them? Do people come to me when they're struggling? We need to look for signs in our own lives that we're growing, that we're trying to step out of the boat and be more than we were before. How do we become stronger, more faithful, more active Christians? How do we make sure that... There was a lesson Brian did just recently that I absolutely loved. He talked about... He said, don't let your feelings dictate your faith, but let your faith dictate your feelings. He, he was saying, basically, you know, we can't be all emotional and that's what we call our faith. But if, if our faith drives us to, to be happy, or if our faith is what causes us to find joy in this world or find love, that, that's, that's ideal. That's the perfect scenario. But our faith should also drive us to be excited. Our faith should also drive us to, to want to be more active. And if our faith is not driving us to be more active or to be more motivated or to be more involved... James says, then our faith is dead. We have to be careful as Christians that we don't come complacent, that we don't become the Christians who just had cake for lunch. I'm just seeing if anybody's paying attention. All right. There there was the thing about the people in the boat. That's all of us, right? And, And, you know, Matthew 8, 18 through 22, Jesus talks to them and he's like, if you want to follow me, you've got to, 
you know, you've got to leave it all behind. You've got to count the cost. You've got to be willing to walk away from your responsibilities and, and become that Christian that you need to be. And then down in John 17, 14 through 15, Jesus in his prayer to God is, is, is talking about them being rejected. But Romans 8, 1 through 3, I, I want to read that, even though I kind of went backward. But it says that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. You see, He says as long as we're in Christ there is no condemnation. As long as we are faithful, there is no condemnation. As long as we are in God's grace, there is no condemnation. You know, when we're thinking about being in that boat, or being on that shore, or being stepping out of the boat, in any of those moments, you know, Jesus was always there. He gave, the, he gave Peter a hand. He calmed the storm for the disciples, and He fed all those people. Jesus is there for all of us in every state of our life. <clears throat> Jesus is there whenever we need Him. But I think it's important to see that we have to go through the water to get to paradise. That we have to, we have to get on the boat and be able to go through the water. And for us spiritually, that means we have to go through that water to make it through to paradise. You know, Jesus urges us all, just as He did with his disciples, to get on the boat. Jesus urges us all to become a part of the kingdom, to, to join His church, to be baptized for the remission of our sins. Jesus urges everyone, He calls everyone to do that, and He'll get us through the storm. He will help to subside that wind. He will make sure that we reach the other side. And only with Him will we be able to do that. And now, it's at this point in our lives, you know, every moment... Every moment is a line in the sand, right? Every moment of our lives. Every moment we, we live, we have this moment where we draw a line in the sand and say, at this point, that's the last of my life and this is the rest of my life. And when we get to that point in our lives, when I look at it and say, there's the rest of my life, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? This is that moment, right? Today, right now, you're saying, this is the rest of my life, what am I going to do with it? And for the rest of my life, I'm going to step out of the boat. For the rest of my life, I'm going to be more active. For the rest of my life, I'm going to let my faith dictate my feelings. I'm going to be, I'm going to be more loving, more active, more involved. I'm going to try to, be, you know, to, to show people Christ in my life. For the rest of my life, today is that moment where you can step out of the boat. Today is that moment for each and every one of us. Be courageous. Be strong. Allow God to to support you, to, to grab your hand when you fall in, to calm the storm for each and every one of us. And I pray that if you need prayers, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, you're sitting there on that boat and the storms are just so bad, you can't even picture stepping out right now. Ask for prayers. Ask for prayers from God. If you're, if you're not a Christian, and, and, and I... You know, we've got a pretty, our, our pretty normal group of folks. But if your salvation isn't right with the Lord, if you feel like, you know, I never committed to Him the way I should have, then now is the time to, to make that commitment right. If we can help you at all with your salvation in any way, through prayer or through baptism, please come as we stand and as we sing.
creation come who After this next song, we'll have a chance to partake of the Lord's Supper for those who were not able to this morning. <laughs> he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Take of it. Um, can I just see a quick show? I know we have one. Is there anyone else that was unable to partake this morning? Okay. All right. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this again, an opportunity to meet together um, and to hear uh, the message that we heard and now to gather back around this memorial. Again, we pray for the one that partakes of this. Uh, to examine their life and to uh, think about the sacrifice, the, the debt that was paid um, on our behalf. Father, bless this bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Father, in the same way, uh, this cup that represents the blood that was shed uh, for many and uh, the blood that washes us, that uh, cleanses us, that washes us and makes us white as snow. Thankful, Father, that we have come into contact with that blood and um, that blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of sins, the, the hope of heaven and the joy uh, that that brings. May we think on that now as we reflect on Christ and his sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray.
Is there anyone that wishes to give? Okay. All right, if you would please stand with me as we sing the first verse of Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Then we'll be dismissed in a closing prayer. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Let's pray. Divine Heaven, we thank you that we could gather here and uh, get to worship you. And we thank you for just your blessings and the life you've given to all of us. And help us to uh, appreciate, help us to take care of it, help us to uh, love you and love your blessings. Help us to uh, be strong throughout the week, help us to be loving and thoughtful, and help us to um, act in the way that you would want us to act. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>